So, you've put together a growth strategy. You've run experiments and optimized your conversion rates. You think you're done? Think again. Hi, I'm Juan, AI trainer at Growth Drive, and today I'm going to show you how AI can take growth hacking to the next level. Let's see the big picture first. Your growth strategy should look like this. You validate your value proposition canvas and business model canvas at least 80%. Then you find your personas to ensure you have product market fit. You model the customer journey of these personas through pilot funnels, focus on the one metric that matters, then run experiments to improve this metric with the growth process. This is already a powerful strategy, but AI can take it further. Let's see how. Step one, enriching your persona. So you've created a persona profile. Let's call him Bernardo. You found out Bernardo's are big spenders, but you don't know why. When you perform an AI clustering analysis on your behavioral data, you realize that Bernardo's are not only big spenders, but also read your blog often, which is something other customers are not doing. This means it's probably beneficial for you to promote this blog. If you're already doing psychographic analysis, you might have certain traits to describe Bernardo. However, it's only when you use AI that you realize there's a correlation between the big spends of money and the fact that Bernardo's are extroverted and conscientious. That means you can create adverts that resonate with these traits. If you want to try psychographic analysis, I recommend you to go to IBM Watson Personality Insights. We also cover this in way more detail in our AI course for marketing and growth. Check it out. Step two, predicting conversions. This is the difference between knowing what your customers have done and what your customers will do. For example, let's look at the retention stage of the pilot fund. If you're data-driven, you already know the percentage of people leaving your business every month. However, what if you could anticipate how many people are leaving, or better, which customers are likely to leave? This is what an AI prediction model can do for you, telling you which customers are in the danger zone so you can rescue them before it's too late. For example, if you know which users are not engaged with an online course, you might want to send them an email to retarget them. Or perhaps you're scoring leads manually, going with your gut feeling. AI can predict, based on user behavior, which of them are acquired and which of them are activated. There is a famous case from Target in which they predicted which of their customers were pregnant from their shopping history. That way, they could send them vouchers for baby products. The problem is that with the automation process, they sent vouchers to a teenage girl. Her dad didn't really appreciate this pregnancy encouragement. But in case you're wondering, yeah, she was actually pregnant. Step three, increasing the quality of your ideas. We are now diving into the growth process, particularly the first stage, gathering ideas. With all the results we've discussed already, you now have much more potential to come up with great experiments. Let me give you a few examples. If your prediction model shows that doing a calendar integration helps retaining customers, you might consider making this calendar integration mandatory. Or if you predicted that users get activated after three visits to your platform, you want to design experiments to make sure they come back at least three times. Or finally, if you're predicting a huge number of orders for Christmas, you might want to improve your shipping capacity. And step four, feeding your rapid experimentation. This applies to all stages in the growth process. For example, let's say you're conducting a survey and you get responses, a lot of responses. Natural language processing, one of AI's most recently developed techniques, can measure which words appear most often together, therefore identifying the most common topics. That way, you figure out what's working and what isn't. Or maybe you're a fashion journalist and you receive tons of images to study. You just need to do a bit of image recognition to classify them in a matter of seconds. When the AI spots similar groups of pixels corresponding to similar shapes, it establishes one category for those images. This comes in very handy when you have a large inventory to organize or to find similar patterns in the fashion industry. And finally, if you're testing new elements in your website, you may want to use a recommender system so you can send different versions to different personas. This saves platforms like Spotify or Netflix billions of dollars every year because the content is much more relevant to the user. These were the four main ways in which AI can empower your growth strategy. Is there any other aspect of AI you'd like us to discuss? If so, please leave a comment below. Also, if you would like to review the growth strategy and the whole growth process, please check this video by David. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you feel like covering these topics in depth, check out our courses in Amsterdam and London. Cheers!